In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a CDN to serve up files from your S3 bucket using a CloudFront distribution. So this means that files in your S3 bucket will get distributed globally so that when users make a request for a file, it gets to them in a much quicker time with much lower latency. And first I'm gonna show you how to set up the CloudFront distribution as the CDN. And then I'm gonna show you how to integrate that into a node application. And I'm gonna be picking up where I left off in my last video, where I had an S3 bucket set up for this website called Instasam, which is just an Instagram clone. So if you haven't already watched that video, I suggest you watch that video because then the code examples will make a little bit more sense. So right now I have no post, but if I go to create a new post and upload an image here, when I submit this, my web app is going to make a post request to create a new post and upload the image into an S3 bucket I have here. So if I refresh this bucket, I should see that it now has one object in here. And if I go back to the web app, we can see that it is requesting this image from the S3 bucket. So here is the URL to get the image from the bucket, this big long signed URL here. But before we set up a CloudFront distribution, I wanna first check the performance of getting an image from the S3 bucket. So I'm just gonna paste the S3 image URL in here, and this website is gonna try and get the image from S3 from clients all around the world. And we can see that the closer we are to the S3 bucket, the quicker we can actually get the first byte of the image. But as we get further away, the latency increases a lot to a point where if you're in Singapore, just to get the first byte of that image would take almost a second. So the point of setting up a CloudFront distribution is to try and minimize all of these times so that it takes the least amount of time as possible for anyone to get the file, regardless of where they are in the world. So once we set up the CloudFront distribution, we can run this test again and see the difference between requesting just from an S3 bucket and from a CloudFront distribution. So like I said, I already have this app set up and I set it up in a previous video. So if you haven't watched that video yet, I recommend you check that out. But right now I just have the images being stored in an S3 bucket and all of the files in the bucket are private and the only way to access them is through assigned URL. So you already need to have an S3 bucket set up where you are storing the images. Then the next thing we need to do is head over to CloudFront to set up a distribution for this S3 bucket. So I'm gonna open up CloudFront here and I already have one distribution set up for a different project. So I'm gonna create a new distribution for this project. And as soon as we go to create a new distribution, the first thing we can do is set up the origin domain. And for this, we're gonna select the S3 bucket that already exists. So for my project, it's for that Instasam app. So I'm gonna select that S3 bucket. Just make sure you select the S3 bucket where you are storing the files that you wanna be associated with this CloudFront distribution. Then we can leave these settings as the default settings. And when we get to bucket access here, we wanna select yes, use OAI, which stands for Origin Access Identity. And this allows us to keep the S3 bucket private and only allow access to the files through CloudFront. So no one will be able to directly request a file from the S3 bucket, they'll always have to go through CloudFront. And then for this, we can just select create new OAI uh, and just click create there. And then that will auto fill in there. That will all be done for us. And then we want this to update the bucket policy for us too. So this will all just automatically set up the permissions so that we can't access things through S3, we can only access it through CloudFront. And that being said, we'll still be able to upload files directly to the S3 bucket, that will be necessary. It's just that when users go to access access the files publicly over the internet, they'll have to go through CloudFront. We don't need to add a custom header. We could enable Origin Shield, but that increased the cost. So I'm gonna leave that as no. For the default cache behavior, we want to redirect HTTP to HTTPS. We'll leave the allowed HTTP methods as get and head, since this is just for getting files. We don't need people to be able to do anything else. And then for restrict viewer access, if we select yes, we can set up signed URLs for our CloudFront distribution, but this requires us to do a few extra steps like creating public and private keys and setting all of that up. So I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but in my next video, I will go over restricting viewer access and setting up signed URLs for CloudFront. So if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell icon so you're notified when I post that video. For the caching policy, we're gonna leave this as the default policy, which caches files for 24 hours. 
And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the video. We don't need to add anything for these settings here. We're not gonna associate any Lambda functions here. Then for the location, we're just gonna leave this as all locations, which is generally what you'll wanna do because you wanna be able to offer the lower latency to anyone in the world, no matter where they're located. These settings here allow us to get more fine grained control over which IP addresses can access which files, which we don't really need for this CDN. Uh, we could add a custom domain name here, which I cover in a separate video, but I'm not gonna do that for this because it is just the URL of the images and not the URL people will be visiting and typing into the browser. So we can leave all of this as the default settings for everything here, uh, and that's it. We can create the distribution. And this can take a few minutes to set up because it is setting up the CloudFront distribution globally. We'll give this a few minutes while it says deploying. We'll wait for this to be deployed and then we'll come back and see how to use this in our web applications. So my CloudFront distribution is now all set up and this is the domain name to the actual distribution. So if I want to get a file from CloudFront, I can just go to HTTPS followed by that URL slash the object name as I stored it in the S3 bucket. So if I go back to my S3 bucket here and just copy over this object name for the only image I have here, I should now be able to see this image served up here, but instead of coming from the S3 bucket, it comes from the CloudFront distribution. So if I go back to that performance test and use this URL instead of the S3 bucket, and I'm gonna open up a new tab here so we can see it side by side. So I'll paste in the CloudFront URL this time and hit test. The first time we request this image, we actually don't see amazing times. They're kind of similar to the times we saw before. But if I make this request again, that image has now been cached in all of the edge locations globally. So the time it takes to get the first byte of this image from the CloudFront distribution is now in such a small amount of milliseconds. It's just crazy compared to what we had with the S3 bucket example. So this is the benefit of using a CDN. We significantly reduce the amount of time it takes for anyone to request one of our files for our web apps. So now let's see how we can use the CloudFront distribution in our node server instead of getting the files directly from the S3 bucket. So I am gonna just copy the CloudFront URL here because I'm gonna need that in my server. I'm gonna head over to my backend code that I have from my previous video. And if I scroll down to where we're getting the posts from the database right here, I have an array of posts and each post has an image name and that's the name that appears in the S3 bucket. So just this random string here. And when I want to create an S3 bucket URL, I use this get signed URL method to generate the URL that then gets sent down to the client. And that's what's being used to actually request the image here. And if we look at the network requests, I should be able to see that the image object has this image URL property that is the URL that's generated from that method there. So now instead of using this S3 method to get the signed URL given the image name, what I need to do is basically just take that CloudFront distribution URL and append the image name onto, let's see image name, onto the end of that. So that is gonna create that URL, that URL that I just used here, where it's the CloudFront distribution, then it's just slash the image name that appears in the S3 bucket. So by doing this, I'm just gonna add this to the post as the image URL, and delete my S3 stuff. Just the domain name of the CloudFront distribution followed by the image name. Now that I have that and I send that back to the client, my React app that I have set up here should now start requesting my images from the CloudFront distribution. So let's see here, it gets the post, then it goes to get the image, and I can see that the image URL here is just from the CloudFront distribution. So getting the images is working. And if I take a look at the code again, to create a new post, there's a bunch of code here, and part of it is just sending that file to the S3 bucket, and all of this was covered in the previous video. And this still stays the same. We still put the file into the S3 bucket, but when we get the file back, we're always gonna get it from the CloudFront distribution. So just to prove this, I'm gonna create a new post here and select a different file. And this is still being sent to the S3 bucket. So if I go back to the S3 bucket and refresh, I should be able to see the brand new file here. I now have two files. In my web app, I can see that I'm viewing the files here, 
but instead of getting this image from S3, it's coming from the CloudFront distribution. So posting an image still stays the same. We still put it into the S3 bucket, but we're getting it from CloudFront, which makes it much, much faster every time we wanna get a file. And remember, we always want our reads to be quicker than our writes because let's take an app like Instagram, for example, someone really famous with millions of followers will post an image just once. And that can take a little bit of time, that's fine. But then if millions of people are trying to view those files, we want it to be as quick as possible for each of those people. We want that to be really efficient. So that's why making a get request to get a file through a CDN is so important because it really reduces the latency at the point that we need it the most. But one thing to note here is that the URLs of the images are not signed. They will always remain the same URL. So once someone has access to the URL, it's gonna remain the same forever. And this can potentially be a bad thing for security reasons or just because you don't want any person or bot or server to be able to request images whenever they want from your CDN. So I will be covering how to sign a CloudFront URL in my next video. So again, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you hit that bell icon so you can watch that video when I release it. But for now, what happens when I go to delete a post? So before I do that, I am just gonna copy this URL uh, and show that I can request this in the browser here. So this is the image that I uploaded to S3 and I'm requesting it through CloudFront. Uh, and this still exists in my S3 bucket. It's one of these images and it still exists in my database. Uh, but right now what I wanna do is delete this image. So I'm gonna delete that, which deletes it from my database and should delete it from my S3 bucket here. It no longer exists. But if I refresh this CloudFront URL, just hit enter here, I still have access to this image. Although it was deleted from S3, it still exists in CloudFront's cache. And this will exist for 24 hours. The cache doesn't get updated for 24 hours. Maybe you're okay with the URL still being valid even though the image has been deleted. But if you wanted to update the cache, make sure that when you delete an image or update an image, those changes are immediately seen in CloudFront, then we need to do an extra step. We need to invalidate the cache for that image. And that is something that I'm also gonna cover in a future video. So make sure you stay tuned for that one as well.